Welcome to Electro Online. Now that we understand quadratic equations and how to solve them, we can solve more complicated let's find the two numbers kind of games. So let's here see what we can do. We have one number that is two more than four times the other number, and the product of the two numbers is equal to 20. Find the two numbers. So again, we start out by defining the numbers in terms of x. So we're going to let x equal the smallest of the two numbers. So let x equal the small number. So the larger number is two more than four times the smaller number. So therefore, we can say that two plus four x, or actually four x plus two, maybe that's a better way to write it. Let's try that. So we can say that four x, so four times the small number plus two, that means two more than four times the small number equal the large number. Now we're told that the product is equal to 20, which means that x times 4x plus 2 is equal to 20, and now we're supposed to solve this for x. Again, that looks like it's going to be a quadratic equation. So let's multiply. We get 4x squared plus 2x equals 20. Moving the 20 across, we get 4x squared plus 2x equals, oh, not equals, we're going to subtract, minus 20 is equal to 0, and notice we can divide both sides by 2, so we get 2x squared plus x minus 10 equals 0. And I don't think we can factor that, so we're going to use the quadratic equation, or the quadratic formula. So this is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to negative 10. And let's plug that into the quadratic formula, where we say that x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So we have x is equal to minus b, that becomes minus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 squared, minus 4, times a, which is uh, 2, times c, which is a minus 10. The whole thing divided by, let's see, 2a, that's 2 times 2. All right, x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of, that's a positive 80 plus 1, that's 81, divided by 4, or that's equal to negative 1 plus or minus 9 divided by 4. That gives us two possible answers. So x is equal to 1 minus 9, that's minus 10, divided by 4, which is equal to minus 2.5, or x is equal to minus 1 plus 9, that's 8, divided by 4, which is equal to 2. Now that is the most likely answer, because we can have a negative number and um, well, actually, maybe we could. Hmm. Let's see, we'll try that out. So let's first check this possible answer to see what we get. So if x equals a small number, then the small number equals 2. And if 4x plus 2 is a large number, then 4 times 2, that's 8 plus 2, that gives us 10. And notice 2 times 10 is indeed 20. So that means that those are the two correct numbers for the large and the small number. What about negative 2.5? Well, let's find out. If x is equal to negative 2.5, if x equals negative 2.5, then two more than four times the small number. So 4x would be equal to negative 10, and 4x plus 2 is equal to negative 8. When I multiply those two together, 2.5, a negative 2.5, times a negative 8 is indeed a positive 20. So since I'm not talking about real things such as square cardboard, I mean the rectangular cardboard or anything like that where I have to have positive numbers, I can also have two negative numbers. The small one can be negative 2.5 and the large one two more than four times a small number. So in other words, we could also have the small number being negative 2.5 and then the large number being a negative 8. When I multiply them together, I also get a positive 20. So it turns out 
that both solutions are actually valid in this particular case with no other restrictions such as the numbers must be positive. <laughs> it turns out that my, uh, my wife who has a degree in applied mathematics just tell me that we can actually factor this. So let me try it out and see if it works. All right, we'll, we'll try 2x and x. We'll try the full method in just a moment. Hmm, two numbers when I multiply get a negative 10. Uh, let's see, 5 and 2, so plus 5 and minus 2. So that gives me a 5x and a minus 4x, that's a plus x, and this gives me minus 10. So this works. So in other words, x is equal to, and that would be a 2, and that would be x equals a negative 2.5. And so it turns out I would have found both solutions using that method as well. Hmm. And I guess you want me to show the fall method as well, right? Okay, let's do the fall method. All right, we'll do the fall method over here. And notice we need a 2 and a 1. And then how can I get a negative 10? Well, how about a negative 5 and a positive 2? or a positive 5 and a negative 2. And let's see, that's enough to get us going. So we're going to multiply across like this. So 2 times 2 gives me a 4, and a 1 times negative 5 gives me a negative 5, which is a negative 1, which does not give me the positive 1. So that's not a good way to do it. How, how about 2 times a negative 2, that's a negative 4, and a 1 times a positive 5, which is plus 5, that is equal to plus 1, which is good. So that means these two numbers and these two numbers give me the correct result. So 2x plus 5, 1x minus 2, 2x plus 5, 1x minus 2. And notice the FOIL method will never let you down. And there it is. That's the other way in which we could have solved the problem. <laughs> All right.